We are in the neurophysiology. In this lecture, we'll talk about how the neurons generate the electrical signal, that's the action potential. And we'll talk about what ion channel open, what ion channel close, so they're able to do this. And let's start with the cell membrane. In unit one, we spend a lot of time talking about the cell membrane. It's made of uh, phospholipid. So a lot of molecules, they could not go through the cell membrane without helper. And the environment of the inside, outside, we call them ECF, ICF, are different. So we know that the outside has high sodium, inside has high potassium. And chloride, chloride go hand in hand with the uh, sodium. So sodium is high outside, chloride is high outside. And these separate ions, ions are charged particles, apparently they create a voltage difference. So that's the membrane potential. And we're going to explain how the neurons able to create a stable, actually not stable, uh, membrane potential because they are able to change. We call them excitable. They can make the inside become more positive, less positive. So let's start from the stable one. How they create about minus 70 millivolt membrane potential. So if you look at the cell, this is a cell, uh, this is the cell membrane, and inside you have a lot of ions, outside you also have a lot of ions. And when we look at the cell membrane, you found, okay, at a, a small segment, you found inside actually have more negative compared with outside. And that's why every living cell, the inside environment is more negative compared with outside. And let's look at the cell membrane. What's the cell membranes create this, responsible for this? The first one, our old friend, sodium potassium pump. Sodium potassium ATPs. You are very familiar with this. We spent a lot of time talking about uh, the primary active transport of the sodium potassium pump in the first unit. So this membrane protein uses ATP as energy source. It pumps sodium and potassium against the concentration gradient. And every time it works, it pumps three sodium out. It pumps two potassium in. So in unit one, we talk about the outside has high sodium, inside has high potassium because of sodium potassium pump. And I also say this guy is like the AC, work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So it will make more sodium pump out and more and more potassium pump in. So it created this kind of concentration gradient. Now let's focus on the charge. Every time it pumps three sodium out, sodium has positive charge. Two potassium in, potassium also have positive charge. And when it works, three positive out, two positive in, minus one. Inside become more negative. So the sodium potassium pump keep working 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Every living cell has sodium potassium pump. It just makes the inside more negative. And you say, is this the main contributor of the resting membrane potential of neuron? The answer is not exactly. It's, it's a contributor, but it's not the main one. It contributes up to about 20% of the membrane potential. It definitely makes the inside more negative compared with outside. But if you only have this one, what's going to happen? You make your AC keep running, your temperature keep dropping, dropping, dropping. That's what's going to happen. So if this keep running 24 hours a day, if no one to balance it, it turns out inside become more and more negative. So the inside membrane's potential is going to become minus 70 millivolt, minus 90 millivolt, and keep dropping to minus 200 millivolt until this, the, the, the neuron die. So this is one of the contributors, but it needs to be balanced. So now you gradually build a concept in your body. Everything needs to be just right, needs to be balanced. So let's look at what's the main contributor. It's a leak channel. Like sodium, like potassium channel, especially potassium, especially potassium. So we talk about the ion channels. Ion channels are like the opener, make the ions be able to go through the cell mem membrane because ions, even though they are small, they are charged particles, so the, the cell membrane uh, won't let them to go through them. So you need to use ion channel. And in unit one, we talk about ion channels. Most of them remain closed because if they open, ions go 
I am just gonna go through them. So they're gonna mess up the homeostasis. So most ion channels were closed. Like we have the uh, different mechanism to open the ion channel. So we have the voltage gated ion channel, ligand gated ion channel, and mechanically gated ion channel. That's what we learned in unit one. And now let's add one more group of channel. This channel called leak channel. And then they tell you their job is stay there and remain open. So it's not a big population, it's a small population. And this leak channel, especially potassium channel, so if you took those uh, advanced neuroscience class, they will talk about this ion channel called inward rectified potassium channel. But here you just know it's a, it's a potassium channel. It's a leak channel, so its job is it's a leak channel, it remains open. When it remains open, potassium is high inside, low outside. So it starts to leak out. It starts to leak out. So it won't make the inside become too negative. It won't go to minus 3000 millivolt. This won't happen. Because once you have enough potassium, it starts to leak out. And when you leak out, you say, would it reach inside, outside become zero? The answer is no. Because inside has more negative charge, outside has more positive. positive. So let's focus on the potassium because that's the main one. And now the potassium is going to leak out, right? When the potassium leak out, okay, what's going to happen? Outside has more positive charge, inside has more negative. So these positive charge ions leak out, it can make the next one more difficult to leak out because the negative charge is going to trap the positive one. So eventually it won't be like inside outside the same potassium. Well, note, it will be those concentration gradient. It will follow the concentration gradient to move out. But also you have the electrical gradient to push them in. So eventually it's balanced. So the inside outside concentration is balanced. You have more potassium inside, that's right. But the concentration is, is maintained. And this is the main contributor. The potassium leak channel is the main contributor for the resting membrane potential. And you also have the leak channel for sodium, but the permeability, the cell is mainly most is much more permeable to potassium than, than the sodium. So that's the main one contribute to the resting membrane potential. So if the question asks you, choose all the membrane protein responsible for the resting membrane potential, you choose the leak potassium channel, leak sodium channel, sodium potassium pump. If I ask you, what's the main contributor to a stable resting membrane potential? And the answer is potassium channel, leak potassium channel, because the cell membrane is most permeable to potassium when the cell is resting, when the neuron is resting. So eventually, the electrical uh, electrical gradient and concentration gradient reach a balance. So inside has high potassium. It still has some potassium outside, but inside is high potassium, outside is high sodium, and outside is high chloride, inside has high protein because the, the cell inside has high protein. And that's the stabilized situation. So we call them, they have resting membrane potential. So now we can measure the voltage. To measure the voltage, you have to put the electrode in, and this is a very uh, specific technique called electrophysiology. You have to use the very small electrode. You want to put the electrode into the cell and don't damage the cell. It's a very unique technology. We'll talk about this technology later. And the scientists invent this. They use the glass pipette actually received Nobel Prize because you need this electrode completely sealed with the cell membrane. It won't damage the male mem uh, won't damage the cell. It, it, it takes a lot of trial and error. Eventually the scientists found the glass is the best one. So the they he received Nobel Prize. And when you put the electrode into the, the cell membrane and measure the voltage, you found okay inside is minus 70 millivolt compared with outside. So inside is a little bit negative compared with outside. And muscle, we we'll gradually will talk about the muscle. And muscle inside is a little bit more negative. Muscle is about minus 90 millivolt. And turn out every living cell in your body. Inside is more negative than outside. And if you took anatomy, you learned all the body cells can be put into epithelium, connective, muscle, and neuron, these four different kinds of tissues. And the muscle and neurons, 
We'll talk more about these two in this class. Muscle and neurons, we say they're excitable. They're excitable means they're able to make the insight become more positive, become minus 20, minus 10, or become plus 20. So this is what we say excitable. So the neurons um, and muscle are able to do that. And in this class, you will learn how they're able to do that. And in the muscle, especially the, the heart muscle, they because they, they do it together. So those, those electrical signals, you can record them. And we call them EKG. So in this class, you will learn the EKG. There's a, you're going in the medical field. Well, you, you need to know the EKG. So the, the neuron and the muscle, they're able to make the inside become more positive. And in this unit, we can learn the, the neuron one. And we'll learn the muscles later. And the scientists are able to measure the concentration of the ions inside and outside. So we talk about those ions, eventually their concentration reach a balance. So inside potassium, yes, we have high potassium inside compared with outside. And the, the concentration is balanced. So inside is about 150 milliamp, and outside is about 5. And Ernest, this is called the Ernest equation. He created this equation. He used this to calculate the equilibrium potential. This equation tells you if this cell membrane, these cells, its membrane potential is contributed by potassium only. And you can use the concentration of potassium inside ICF and outside ECF to calculate what's the correct potential. So now let's look at the potassium. Potassium inside is 150 milliamp, outside is 5. So you can put those numbers in, right? Outside is 150, inside is 5, and D is the charge. Charge is positive 1. So when we do the calculations, and we know when we really measure it, it's about minus 70 millivolt, right? So we use the Ernest equation, say, if we only care about the potassium, and we do the calculation, what's the voltage? So if I ask you this, this, this question, okay, what's the equilibrium potential created by the potassium? And you do the calculation, you do the calculation. So you put those numbers in, and you found, okay, five, or outside is five, inside 150, and 61 multiplied this, you got a minus 90 millivolt. Is this. So this tells you if we only care about potassium. And based on our modeling, this is the modeling. And the resting membrane potential should be minus 90 millivolt. And when we do the experiment, we found it's minus 70. It's, it's good. It's not perfect, but it's good. This tells you the membrane potential is mainly, mainly contributed by potassium. This is one contributor. It's like you purchased uh, your retirement uh, retirement fund and you purchased the SP500, okay, and a big portion of them is come from the uh, come from Apple, okay. Then the Apple it would be the main contributor for your uh, future return. Just like this, okay. So we know the potassium is the main contributor, and there are still other ions. Then let's take a take a look at one more. This is the sodium. So sodium we found outside is high, inside is low, right? So we we do the calculation of sodium. Say that if the membrane potential is mainly contributed by sodium, what's gonna happen? So we, we do the calculation, we found we put the outside concentration, inside concentration, and, we, and put the log and 61 multiply it, we get a plus 60. So if this membrane potential is mainly contributed by sodium, and the membrane potential we recorded should be plus 60 millivolt. Oh, it's pretty far away from the resting membrane potential. And we know when the cell is resting, it's mainly, mainly contributed by potassium, not by sodium. But sodium play a little bit rule. Okay, let's take a break.